Hello guys, welcome to episode four of the Naked Trainer Show. Um, I have the amazing Craig Cousy on the show today. Hi mate. Thanks Jordan. No worries, thanks for coming on. Pleasure. Um, guys, Craig Cousy, he's done some amazing things in his life and his career. Um, he's done three of the biggest ultra marathons I've pretty much ever heard of and that's what we're gonna talk a little bit about today. And he's a, he's a published author as well, uh, wrote a great book for one for all. Um, about his family and also the marathons that he did. Um, so guys, we're gonna to touch base on this. So Craig, how's life? How's everything treating you? <laughs> well, believe it or not, I've actually had cancer the last 12 months. I've yeah, been battling yeah, yeah. that myself, but yeah. apart from that, I feel good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, guys, just to mention as well that Craig, you 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 raised over a million bucks for um, for these marathons, didn't you? And for the books, is that I correct? I did, yeah, yeah. My daughter, eldest daughter, she was diagnosed with cancer when she was seven. I decided then to try and raise some money. Um, that's how I got into the ultra marathons. And the first one I did a um, thousand kilometre ocean paddle from Sydney to Queensland. Right. You did three, yeah? I did three. That was the first one. Um, the second one I ended up doing was from one side of Australia to the other. We called them A to B to C. The first one, Avalon to Broadbeach for cancer. Right, okay. The second one was uh, Albany in Western Australia, which is the bottom tip, right. all the way across to Broken Bay here in home. So that was 5,000 kilometres. Um, obviously didn't have enough time and holidays yeah. to paddle all the way around. Yeah. So I uh, paddled, cycled and ran Jeez. across Australia. That took me 34 days. Yeah. And then the last one was actually 10 years after Jesse passed away from the cancer. I decided to do the last big one, which was a 91 days all the way around Australia. And again, it was more or less paddling up the east coast of Australia, cycling across to the Northern Territory went through Lake Argyle, down through the West um, Australian coast paddling, came inland, ran through the Great Sandy Desert, and then more or less cycled, paddled across all the way through. Wow. Tasmania and then back up Sydney, so it was 91 days of, Jesus. yeah, pretty much wow. every day. I think I had four days off in the 91 days. Did you ever do these in teams, or did you just always do it by yourself? Always by myself. Right, okay. I couldn't uh, probably drag anyone mad enough, mad enough. to do the same oh, thing. Yeah. If I, I, was, I probably wasn't born then, but if I was, I would have done it with you. <laughs> the hardest thing is too, you know, you've got to listen to what your body says. So some days you're feeling really good yeah. and you can climb, you know. You, I think one day there I did 400 k's on the on the bike and yeah. it felt really good. And other days you, you're stuck. Right, got you. So you've got to listen to what your body says. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. yeah. And just so, just so the listeners know, um, Every ultra marathon. Can you talk about what the basic ultra marathon is, or is there is there are they all different? Do you always cycle, swim, paddle, or is it always just one? No, the, the first one was just paddling. Right. Uh, that's how I started. Yeah. I used to be a boat rower. So I that's in a canoe. Yeah, in yeah. a kayak. In kayak. A, yeah. Like a uh, ocean racer. Right. Okay. Um, so slightly different to a kayak. So you, you're actually sitting on the ski rather than in it. Yeah. They're 17 foot long. Yeah. Um, quite slim. An average person sits on it, you'll fall in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. a lot of your energy, you know, is actually taken up balancing the ski, especially in the ocean. Right. Okay. Um, so that was the first one. That was 16 days of every day. 16 paddling. days every yeah. day. Averaging about 70 k's a day, which is the same distance as the toughest race in the world, which Jesus. is the Molokai. So. And obviously 16 days. That was race one. That was that, that was, was the first one. one yeah. And was that that was always? It's always been around raising money for cancer research. Yep. Right. We raised about $152,000 then. For the first one? First one, yeah. Right, okay. The second one was, as I said, a combination. I paddled the bottom of Western Australia, uh, cycled across the Nullarbor, then I paddled the Murray River, right. funnily enough, from South Australia all the way up to New South Wales, right. and then ran and cycled across and then finished paddling down into Broken Bay. How did you feel when you got off the river, then you went into a run or a cycle? Was, was which was toughest for you? They're all tough. Like, yeah, of course. There's <laughs> nothing easier, yeah, yeah, especially yeah. when your body's doing it every day. Yeah, you do get into a routine, but I mean, some days, like I remember when I did the 400 k's, I actually split my ass. So when I took my my yeah, pants yeah. off, it was bleeding. But the next day, then you got all these cuts and blisters. You, <laughs> you got to get your ass. Yeah. 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 Oh my god. And that was just from wear and tear of you know Jesus. 10 or 12 hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Life. Just non-stop. Yeah. Right. Okay. And did you have or did you have a crew following you? I had a sport crew. Yeah, sport crew. Yeah, yeah. you know, you can imagine the calories you get. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you yeah. got to consume them to, to keep yeah. the body going and function. Yeah. We did a heap of fundraising as well, so it wasn't just a matter of maybe doing a ten or twelve hour day physically. Mm -hmm. Then some days you'd have to back up at that night and do a Rotary Club function as a guest speaker. Oh shit! So yeah. there's the element of the marketing side yeah, of it as well. Exactly. That you to, oh bloody hell! Yeah, of course. Wow. Okay. Um, and with the running, um, are you a good runner? I wouldn't say I'm a good runner, but I used to be able to 
you know, I've done the 100k Oxbams and was right, ranked third, yeah. you know, and yeah, that yeah. was a pretty good result yeah. as, a as a team. team yeah. yeah, as a yeah. team. So that's doing it about 14 hours in 100k. Right, wow. That is good. Uh, yeah. Which isn't too bad, yeah. but I wouldn't put myself as a great runner. Right, right okay. So would you say the running as part of that, the first one that you did was the hardest part? Well, paddling was the first one. Paddling, yeah, right. I didn't run the second one. Mm -hmm. I used to use the running in the morning as more of a warm up. Yeah, right. So you might do 15, 20 k's and jump on the bike yeah. and go from there or yeah. same on the ski. Right, fantastic. But depending where you were in Australia as well, because yeah. you know, you're going to places that are off the, off the grid. Yeah, 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 of course. So coming yeah. across on the third one when I went down through Western Australia and we ran the back of the desert, like, yeah. that's your only option. Right, bloody hell. Yeah. So, you got so how did the sport crew follow you that? Or just in a car? Or in a, <laughs> we had a four-wheel drive. Four yeah. drive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's, there's roads out there that link up to the gas pipe, so um, you're on a track, but you can't ride part of it because it's rocky. Right. So four-wheel drives. Bloody hell. Yeah. So did you have to sometimes stop because they couldn't follow you? Was there ever a time like that? No, they no. could always, out in the ocean, obviously, they, they yeah. not always there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but on, the, on land, pretty much, you're there the whole time. Yeah. Right, I've got another question for you, because I'm planning to do a challenge. Yep. Not anywhere near the stuff that you do, but I think we've spoken about this before, about the sharks, yeah. right? My biggest fear is sharks. Oh. I'm pathetic with it, right? So when you were in all, all three of these ultramarathons, was there ever a time where you had a scary moment with a shark? Oh, not just a shark. Not just a shark. No, no. crocodiles as well. Bloody hell. But the first one that was probably the scariest was off Coffs Harbour, off right. the solitary island. So yeah. There was two great whites. Um, I was going through a big school of fish, which always intrigues me. Yeah, yeah. Um, I can remember looking down to my left about a metre and there's a, a shark as big as a ski, which you know, you're talking four metres, five metres. Uh, and just following me, just like where your foot is now. You can't do anything. You're probably five, six k's out to sea. So do you just stay still? Or do you I just, just carry paddling. Right, okay. That's, a, that's all you can do. Just coming up to have a look, is he? But yeah, okay. I think on, on that, we saw a shark every day, but they were the two biggest. Well, um, especially, you know, when you're coming into a town and there's a river mouth and there's big bull mole coming out, there's always tiger sharks yeah, waiting yeah, yeah. for them. But, I mean, most of them just pop up and have a look at you yeah, yeah. and then go again. Yeah. And yeah, the last one uh, I did around Australia, at the top end of Western Australia, I had to paddle through a place called Lake Argyle, yeah, where right. there's both saltwater and freshwater yeah. crocodiles. Yeah. I think the estimation, there was, there was a helicopter doing a, a check then, there was uh, between 30 and 40,000 freshwater. And there's you just yeah. doo -doo -doo, paddling through. And the guy said, where you get out, quite dangerous because there's a lot of big breeding solid oh, yeah, crocodiles. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I mean, you get by. Yeah, you do, you do. Well, dogs wow. was the other thing too, that sort of... Um, what, when you're on the run? Yeah, especially through the back of the desert. Right. We were warned about them. And I never saw them, but I hallucinated at one stage going through at about uh, five in the morning. I was by myself. I left the support crew asleep. Yeah. I took off. I said, you know. Was it a plan to take off or? For me it was. Yeah, Just yeah. a backpack and I let them sleep in and said, look, see me four hours down the track. Yeah. I'll cover this amount of distance. But I've been told about these wild dogs and I started hallucinating because your body's tired. Of course it is, yeah, yeah, starting yeah. starting to see things. It's quite weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really I actually weird. had the same thing. When I walked to Brisbane, I had the same thing, hallucinations and time, yeah. finishing an 18-hour day, and then I'd, get, I'd, I'd think I'd be sleeping or anything, but actually I'd already gotten up, and I'd start to hallucinate things. You know, yeah. it's, it's so peculiar when you push your body to that limit. Well, I only did it, I did it three times. That was one. Another time was on a river when I was on the Murray River, and I had these big fish coming up trying to eat me, and I stopped paddling. Jeez. And then another time was when I was wow. cycling, and all of a sudden the telegraph poles were shooting in front of the bike. And you, oh my god! And so that's when you know it's time to get off. Yeah, yeah, time to get off. Yeah, 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 yeah. Collate your thoughts. So come back weird, to yourself. Yeah, weird. yeah, I can imagine. I can imagine. Yeah. Um, what's one of the best highlights you've ever out of, the, out of any of the three, out of any of those experiences that you could say? Probably finishing was one of the best. <laughs> there, look, finishing and handing over a check for you know a million dollars or something yeah. like that. Is just an un unbelievable feeling, especially knowing, you know, after going through the death of my daughter and living in the hospital and, and knowing where the money was going, because every cent that we raised, we knew where it was going, you know. Um, so that's probably the highlight, but it, as a, a physical um, highlight, some of the scenery, mate, was just unbelievable oh, yeah, in can Australia. Imagine, can imagine. The mornings where you, I can remember off um, the Gold Coast on the third one. Whales were actually coming up under the ski. Wow. And, and, you know, there were dugongs off um, the top in Queensland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 
you know, they're probably about three metres under you, these massive big dugongs in clear water. It's That's incredible. Yeah, yeah some it's incredible really moments amazing you have with experience. nature. Right, that's, yeah, that's amazing. I mean, it, it sort of, if, if you haven't done anything like that, it's kind of, you can't get your head around it until you've done an achievement like that, I think. Yeah, and funny enough, people don't give themselves enough credibility to try things. Right. And people are scared yeah. of failing. And someone, when I do guest speaking functions, people always say, you know, what's what's the biggest thing you used to worry about? Aren't you worried about this? And I say, well, if you worry about it, yeah. you're more inclined to fail. Yeah. If you don't worry about things and try it, absolutely. Yeah, you know, the only...